You're watching Everfree Radio. pal Dusty from the West Coast here in San Jose, California, having me a cider after I went to the gym today, had a good, good workout. My boy Jack's played rubbing off on me. Mm -mm -mm. Mm. <sighs> How y'all doing? We're having a wonderful time out here because we have a wonderful entertainer with us tonight. He does a little bit of everything, so we have plenty to talk about. And that would be Mr. Vincent Tong. Vincent! What's up? What's up? How you What's doing? Up? I'm doing very well, Dusty. How are yes. you? How's Vancouver today? It's it's uh, typical Vancouver weather. Oh, really? You can guess what that is. Rainy and cold? Yeah. Probably, <laughs> we don't really know what the sun is at this point, but uh, I'm sure well, it exists somewhere. Well, it, it is Canadian winter. <laughs> exactly. It is. Uh, Whistler's not too far from you guys, right? Going a little snowboard. Yeah, it's like two, two and a half hours. Two and a half hours. hours. Do you, you snowboard? As we drive. You snowboard? Yeah, I snowboard. Yeah. Ooh, dude. I do. We'll have, we'll have, we'll have to go snowboarding together, man. That's that's my that's my gig. Yeah, you do it too. Oh yeah, man. Nice. Watch, watch Where do you go? I actually I go to Sierra Tahoe, and okay. I go to Bear Valley Mountain. So no. uh, I got to get out. Got to get out this year because it's been a little busy. Uh, yeah. but yeah, I'm, I'm itching to go. So, mm -hmm. yeah, um, you gotta take advantage of it. Oh, I know, man. It's like two years ago was the last time I went and I'm like itching, itching, itching. And we had this huge mass of snow on the West coast and it was like it driving, it was going over highway four and like the snow was like three times the height of my car. Wow. They, they like plowed like a car width tunnel <laughs> through Amazing. the snow and it was like, I hope this doesn't fall <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. while going up Amazing. to, going up to get my ski in. That was, that was all kinds of fun. Oh, let me get your head shot up here so everybody knows the beautiful looks of what you look like. Oh. oh. Yes. What is this? What is that? What is that? That's, that's your, that's your head shot, man. Headshot's up there. Yeah, your headshot's up there. With, with the, the scraggly beard and the... With the scraggly beard. The scraggly beard. I know. One, yeah. <laughs> I have nothing on your mustache. Oh, uh, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm sure, I, I'm sure if you get the right part, we would see Chinese Kung Fu master out of you. <laughs> you know what, man? That's like the, the most facial hair I've ever had in my whole life right there. I tried so hard. <laughs> Every night, I would like, <clears throat> and little yeah. little hairs would pop out, but that's all I got. Yeah. So we're going to get back. We're going to give a little list of what Mr. Vincent Tong has done in his career. Going way back. Way back. You started out as a dancer, of all things. Well, sort of like, yeah, I guess so. Yeah. It's kind of weird. I sort of like landed into this kind of dance world because mm -hmm. it was um, my sister did uh, Chinese folk dancing. Oh, okay. Uh, we were like, I have a twin sister. Nice. So, I'm a twin myself. Yeah. And, and she was dancing, uh, you know, when we were like grade six and grade seven and mm -hmm. she bet me. She's like, you would never do something like that. I'm like, sure, I would. I would totally do it. She's like, I bet you a dollar you won't do it. I'm like, fine. Fine. So I got a dollar mm -hmm. and uh, I, I went into Chinese dance. Nice. And I did it for a year, and then uh, people found out. And at that age, you know, you get teased a lot, mm -hmm. and you actually care about what people think. Right. 
So I, I sort of quit it after a year of it, which was very unfortunate. Yeah, because you got you got some jobs out of that. Yeah, I did. Yeah. yeah so yeah, and then later movies. on in life, I sort of picked it back up and mm -hmm. and then sort of made a little bit of a career out of it. So yeah, so and and then uh, from there you started going into um, a little bit of live action. Uh, mm -hmm. So you've been in a, couple, in a bunch of live action shows, uh, some mm -hmm. that our our wonderful audience might actually know. Um, Caprica. The Battlestar yeah. Galactica spinoff, you were in an episode of that. Yes. And, yeah, I just did a, one episode of that, yeah. And then Fringe, which was an awesome show. Mm -hmm. um, one episode of that. Um, mm -hmm. And then uh, Flashpoint, which was a Canadian uh, crime drama, right? That's right, yeah. Canadian crime drama. Um, so a lot of live action before you actually went into voice, correct? Yeah, that's right, yeah. I did um, uh, a lot of theater, musical theater, actually. Okay. I mean, that stuff you probably can't find on the internet. No, I can't find that on the internet. But... I did a lot of musical theater, and I still do some. Um, I did, and, I did uh, see this really great picture of you and four other guys with the jazz hands out. Oh, really? Yeah. So I don't know what... That could what, be a plethora of shows. That could be a plethora of shows. It's all like, jazz hands and shows. Yes. The, uh, and then we went into a lot of different voiceover work from Kid vs. Cat, yeah. which is a wonderful show. No, Screwball's a, one, a big fan of that, that screwed up show. Lego Ninjago, is that what it's called? Ninjago? Yeah, Ninjago. Yeah. Ninjago, you play Kai. That was that a bad guy? No, he's uh he's like the good guy. He's oh, like he? um when the first the first season it was it was mainly about uh Kai and finding himself mm -hmm. and then he he finds uh, out that he needs to uh find his sister who gets captured right. and then three other three other ninjas come in and then they become this group, they form this group and they battle evil. Battle evil. Speaking, speaking of battling evil, we're coming to one later on. We're going to talk about battling evil. <laughs> okay. I got one for you. Um, then you go into Death Note. Wow. That's mm -hmm. an awesome, awesome show that is. Oh, my uh, gosh. Such a fun show. Yeah, that's a fun show. Um, and then you worked on Iron Man, Iron Man Armored Adventures. You're, you're yeah. Gene Khan in the Mandarin. Yes. All right, y'all. Uh, this is really scary that you know all this Volta stuff. Voltron Force. <laughs> yes. Played Daniel in Voltron Force. Now, one, I am a huge Ghost in the Shell fan. Huge mm -hmm. Ghost in the Shell fan. So you played many different characters on Ghost in the Shell SAC second gig uh, from the research that I did. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, so we'll talk a bit about that. Um, and then <laughs> our great you worked with our great friends Lee Tokar and Andrew Francis on this one show, which I didn't even believe was actually made, called Sushi Pack. Oh, yeah. The crime-fighting sushi? <laughs> sushi. Those, those, that was my very first cartoon, actually. Was it? Yeah, oh, very wow. first tell me a bit about this show because I'm like I'm going. How does that work? Well, it, it's a it's a show. Oh man, it's so long ago now. But what? they they're sushi. They're pieces of sushi, and and they fight bad sushi, I guess. The, the, and the, uh, I was a bad sushi. Sort of like Fish Police, way back in the day. There was a comic book called Fish Police that sure. I used to. Call. Oh. Okay. It's kind of neat. Yeah, um, exactly like that. Yeah, <laughs> exactly like it. Not really, but <laughs> <laughs> not at all. Like that. Uh, but not yeah, it was like a, it was a fun show, and it was my very first show. And working with such great talent, such as Andrew and mm -hmm. and uh, Sam Vincent was on Sam there. Sam Vincent was there. You know him yep. and um, and Tara Strong actually. Ta oh, she, she was on that show. Well. Yeah, yeah, she was not. She wasn't on the list on the IMDb. Um, oh really? Yeah. yeah she, for some reason, she was, it was my very first cartoon, and I was like, "Oh, Tara Strong." Tara Strong. I'm like, I don't know anybody, so I don't really know. <laughs> and but she was in L.A. Uh -huh. and she she's Canadian, right? But she works in L.A. all the time. Yes, she but is. she actually came up for a few records, which was mm -hmm. really cool to see her and, and work with her. Which is, which is amazing. I'll, I'll get into one of my other questions later. Um, sure. So and then you did video games. Uh, the biggest one that I knew of was Sleeping Dogs, which was right. which was the uh, the gangster uh, mm -hmm. Southeast Asia. That's game, right. Yeah. Uh, which was kind of cool. I played that game. Uh, yeah. It was kind of a cool game. Uh, nice. And then Shank 2, which I know nothing about. Yeah. It's, uh, Shank is a, it's a pretty gruesome kind of great game. It's um, a friend of mine, actually. He has this company called Klee Entertainment in Vancouver. Mm -hmm. And he asked me, since I was you know doing a lot of voiceovers, he asked me if I wanted to voice direct. And I was okay. like, oh, cool. Ooh, really? So I did voice direction on that show, and I voice uh, did some voices as well as um, cast the show. I brought in some people. And right. and um, so it was, a, it was a great project. It was really cool. fun. Voice direction must have been a lot more fun. 
Yeah, it's just like it's fun bossing people around. <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> no, it's it's great. It's so fun because you learn so much as an actor, but you learn even more behind the behind the glass. Oh yeah. You you see exactly what people want, and 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 you know, even though I was working with um, like such professionals like uh, Michael Dobson, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, being able to voice direct him and going like, oh, that's this is why he works all the time because he gives right. the producers, he gives the client exactly what they want. Mm-hmm. This is what they want, and I'm like, wow, okay. So it was a huge learning process for me too, and and uh, very very grateful for that oh, opportunity. Cool. cool. Um, you've been doing this for an awful long time now. How how old are you actually? I didn't catch that. I, I am <laughs> years old. Oh, really? Yeah, exactly. That's nice. how old I am. Nice. But you've been doing this for a very long time. What, what, I mean, other than your sister, you know, trying to get a buck out of you for dancing, what really yeah. got you into wanting to do musical theater and, and movies? What, what was, what was the driving force that really, you, you really wanted um, to do this? Well, I think I always was like the, the class clown, mm-hmm. always making jokes and making people laugh and doing different Im- impressions as a kid. And then, um, I got to high school and I was like, you know, I'm, I, you know, I'm not like totally diagnosed, but I think I'm a bit ADD. Okay. So I'm just like bouncing off the walls and like, you know, I can't really concentrate in school very well. And, and then someone's like, oh, you should take drama. I'm like, really? Uh, okay, sure. I'll try it out. And I had a lot of fun in that class. And then my, my teacher, uh, my high school drama teacher gave me a, a scene study project and it was, uh, Tony and Riff's scene from Uh West Side Story. I don't know if you're you're a show, but there's a very beginning scene and and, uh, uh, Riff is trying to convince Tony and I was playing the part of Tony to go to the dance and then I'm like, cool, there's a scene and then I'm like, oh, what's this part at the end? It's a song and I'm like, I don't have to sing the song, right? And she's like, yeah, you do. I'm like, that's not fair. No one else has to sing the song. I'm not singing in front of anybody. He's like, she's like, okay, well, don't have to sing it then. I'm like, great. She's like, yeah, but you'll fail. I'm like, oh my gosh. All right. So I was like, uh, this is so humiliating. I can't believe I'm actually going to do this. Like, I knew I could sing, uh-huh. but I never really sung in front of anyone right. uh, like that before. So I was like, sucked it up, and I did the scene, and I sang the song, and I felt great up there, but was, and I was just so nervous, you know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. doing something you've never done before. Oh, absolutely. And I, I went off stage, and the lights, I remember the lights going black, and there was just silence. And mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, my God, that's horrible. And then, like, maybe three seconds later, just everyone was screaming. And I was like, what? That's that's good. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> so so afterwards, everyone just, you know, was very complimentary. And was like, I didn't know you could sing like that. And that was amazing, blah, blah, blah. And then so my teacher sort of saw some potential in me. Mm-hmm. And um, kind of guided me towards uh, doing musical theater school. and. Yeah. And um and to do these little summer camp shows and mm-hmm. so yeah that's sort of where it started so I owe a lot of the the origins of my career to her. Cool, absolutely yeah. cool. I, I'm sort of I've got sort of the same thing. I've been doing this obviously mm-hmm. for yeah. a little while, and I've always been a singer myself. I got I went in a choir in ninth grade, and I like to sing. I like to karaoke and stuff. And I've got a my voice teacher, who's a very good friend of mine, does mm-hmm. musical theater here in San Jose. And cool. she's, she's been trying to like boot me in the butt. It's like, come on, come on, come on. You need to do like chorus or something. You just need to get out there and try it. And yeah. it's like the spring I'm going, maybe, maybe I should, maybe I should go just give it a shot. Yes. Yes. You, know? you definitely and, should. Yeah. So I'm, I'm going to like drag her and say, okay, what do you got? What should I, what should I do? So, nice. Yeah. What are your songs? What do you like to sing? Oh, I like to sing rock, my boy. I'm, I'm rock. a heavy rock singer. Oh yeah. But, like but, but when I was in choir in ninth grade, yeah, I was the only bass voice in sixty, and I stuck out stuck out like a sore thumb. <laughs> so the teacher had to actually write me parts, and really? we did uh, the Rose. I know you know that song. Yes. And sir. of course, there were four of us doing a solo mm-hmm. at the start of the song. So I had to I had to get out of the sixty people, set up with four people in front of all the auditorium to sing this four part harmony to the beginning of the Rose. It was like. Uh, I'm gonna die. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and, it, and of course I cracked, and but it was all right. It was it was all right. But I I love going to sing karaoke and doing you know Nazareth and Megadeth and all this all other right. stuff. Just having a great time. You know, just get yeah. out there and belt it. Um, awesome. Okay. Uh, next question. You've been a dancer, a live actor, and a voice actor. All the yes. stuff. Um, what is the favorite? What is your favorite thing to do as an entertainer? You know, the, the, the one thing that you love to just go do out of all this stuff. Oh, you know what? I get asked that question a lot. Mm-hmm. And 
I don't think I can. I don't think I can answer that. But I. This is what I'll say because I do love everything so much. I love、okay. every aspect of what I get to do, and that's why I do it. You know, because、yes. that's my goal in life is to do what I want to do. Oh, absolutely. And to enjoy what I do. So、um, I'm very lucky and very grateful that I have so many different venues that I can, you know, go towards. And but、uh, you know, like as a kid, I've always wanted to be a cartoon character. So、mm-hmm. now I'm like actually living the dream. Yeah. And then you know we watch TV and we watch films. And we're like,、well, I want to be on TV, so I get to do that as well.、Mm-hmm. And but there's something about live theater that is just so beautiful and magical. And it's so ch- so cheesy to think about like、yeah, it's magical, but it's but, not. But it is. It is. It, it absolutely is. is. When you step on that stage, I remember when I was doing、um, Mamma Mia in、mm-hmm. uh, Toronto, okay. and I was understudying Pepper, one of the the lead dancer guys, and、mm-hmm. he has this big scene where he has to.、Um, They sing "Does Your Mother Know" and and he does this whole dance solo and and is kind of wooing the older lady,、mm-hmm. and I was so freaked out because I it was my first time on,、mm-hmm. and I remember my heart was beating so fast and I was walking on the, the little、uh, platform to go outside、mm-hmm. into the stage and once you, the lights hit you it's like boom it's just calmness yeah and you're just like so in control and you see and you know that everyone's eyes are on you just waiting to see what you're gonna say it, and it's just it, such a powerful. Beautiful moment that you can't really capture like that in、yeah. that way on on film or or in the voiceover world. The, the first so, the first time I went to a play、um, mm-hmm. was Cats. First,、mm-hmm. You know,、nice. and, and the thing was I'd never gone to a theater, right?、Mm. I never went to see any of the things that came through. Oh, I'm I'm a、uh, theater, <laughs> right? So a girlfriend <laughs> took me to see. Well, you like you know you like you'll like this. You'll like Cats. Cats is、yeah. cool. Come and come and watch this. And I was enthralled. I was, really, I was I was enthralled. I mean, it, I'm going, yeah, yeah, fine. I'm sitting back in my chair, and all of a sudden, it's like the lights go up, and the first song hits, and I'm going,、mm-hmm. <laughs> no way,、yeah. that is so cool. And then then we went to see Lion King, and it was like, oh yeah, I like theater. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I like yeah. theater now. You know,、mm-hmm. Lion King is awesome. Transforms you, right? It's like it does. Like film. Films, films, you know, they can entrance you, and and you're in their world. But、yeah. theater, you are physically in their world,、mm-hmm. and then you're, you know, your your perception is just like, you are in living yeah, in the world of, of the Lion King or there, the cats, right? Yeah, and, exactly. And, and the costuming and the and the sets and how it changes, and and you're sitting there. It's like it's live. It's it's like if that if that actor or that singer screws up, it's like you're you're part of that world. With, with, <laughs> yeah, with a, with a film, with a film, they can go back and retake it and retake it and retake it and retake it, whatever, until they get right. But、yeah, if, film if, sometimes gets a bit contrived that way. Yeah, yeah, and, and that's、uh, why I say like, yeah, I think the love of the theater is always going to be there. Yeah.、Um, okay, let's go to voiceover work. Okay. Okay. What is your favorite type of voiceover? Is it anime redub, ensemble cast in a room? Do you do you do narration for books? You know, is there is there something about a certain aspect of the voiceover work that you like over, over others? Well, I'll tell you what I love, and I'll tell you what I hate. Okay.、Um, hate's a strong word. Maybe I'll use.、Hate. Not like as much. <laughs>、um, dubbing is really hard. I find it really, really hard. It's extremely difficult for me because it's sort of like you're following the bouncing ball. You know, you're in there,、mm-hmm. you have your cans on, and you're looking at a screen, and you have your script on your 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 stand,、right. and you're waiting for the beeps, and、mm-hmm. then you have to watch the mouth and watch your script and read everything in the same time. If it takes a stop and a pause, you have to pause. I'm like, oh, it's so confusing.、Mm-hmm. I was terrible at it. Uh, Death Note was super super fun, but it was difficult for me. <laughs> so I would say that's not my favorite dubbing.、Mm-hmm. But、um, and I admire the people that can do it. You know, in one take, there's some people that are just phenomenal at it. Like Scott McNeil is amazing at、yeah. it.、Um, these guys just blast in there and they're like done within an hour. Uh, but what I do love is I love I love doing like character voices.、Mm-hmm. I love I love the character you know、um, different voices that I don't get to do often. You know, and and I I'm very grateful. But I get cast in these roles that are just my voice, and I'm like,、right. oh, I want to do the fun stuff. Like Lee, Lee's、yeah. like repertoire、oh. is amazing, and、yeah. he does all the fun, like goofy, crazy yeah. characters. Yeah. I'm like, I、yeah. want to try that. Yeah. <laughs> Yep. But we, they're so good that it's like, well, of course you're gonna, you know, consider leave, you、mm-hmm. know, before anybody else, right? Because those guys are just geniuses. They're so good. Sam Vincent, yeah. Because I had、yeah. I had Lee on this program, and I swear to God, I talked to 15 different people. 
Exactly. You know? <laughs> and like Trevor, Trevor Duvall, too. Like, those guys just, like, they just rattle it off. It was crazy when I was first – I remember my very first day in the studio. Mm-hmm. And there was uh, Scott McNeil, Andrew Francis, Sam Vincent, Brian uh, – I think Brian Drummond was in there. Mm-hmm. And – no, maybe not Brian Drummond. Brian Dobson was there. And um, all these people were just – they were like comedians. They uh-huh. were all so funny. And they were all like trying to probably subconsciously trying to top each other with funniness. And I'm yeah. like, this is crazy. I was just sitting here. Everyone is hilarious. Everyone's mm-hmm. doing a crazy accent. And then when someone's Scottish, the other person goes Japanese. The other person's like, I'm a Simpsons character. I'm like, what is going on here? This is a crazy world. I was so intimidated. So wow. intimidated. Wow. Um, but uh, but yeah. it's a learning process. Cool. Um, yeah. Are you a, a huge sci-fi fan? Uh, no. No? I'm not. Really? No. Wow. Cause, uh, but the work on Fringe and Caprica was like, uh, it was like, it, was it <laughs> exciting to be on those shows, being that they're so huge in sci-fi? You know what? The funny thing is, it's like, I know everyone was like, oh, you're on Fringe. That's great. You're on Caprica. I really, you know, to be honest, mm-hmm. I don't really watch those kind of shows. Oh, okay. So um, uh, I think it's a great honor to be, you know, accepted and to be a part of that show. But mm-hmm. uh, no, I can say I'm not really a big sci-fi fan. Oh, no. Okay, <laughs> sorry to disappoint. No worries, no worries. No, everybody knows. <laughs> everybody does what they do. Um, yeah. Speaking of uh, Canadian TV versus, mm-hmm. say, American TV, you got Caprica and you got uh, Fringe, which are huge American shows. Uh, yes. But then you've got. Uh, the Canadian shows you've been on. Is there is there a difference in production between, say, uh, an American show and a Canadian show? Is there different ways they do things? Is it quicker? Is it is there what what's like the different things? Uh, yeah, you know, I think the things that you've listed out are very true. They are you know quicker. Or they're they're bigger production. They have more money. Americans have more money when they come up to Vancouver. And, uh, you know, they get tax breaks. And that's a big thing that we've been talking about over here in BC is the, the tax incentives and the tax breaks that we are lacking in comparison to Ontario and Montreal. So um, uh, to answer your question, I think, yes, I think Canadian productions are done. The, the, the crew that we work up with over here in Vancouver are amazing. Mm-hmm. You know, regardless, the crew in BC, they're phenomenal. Toronto as well. Really, really fun, good people and hard workers. It's just sometimes they they have more money in America. So when they come up here and they start shooting things, if they don't like something, we can go for 14 hours. We can go for 16 hours. Right. That's okay. But if you're on a, you know, a CBC show up here uh, that's Canadian, right. like we got to wrap things up because we can't spend that much money paying so many actors over time and so many crew people over time. Right. So I think that's a huge factor. Ah, okay. Yeah. yeah. That's what I was wondering. Um, uh, what about you yourself? What are your? We already talked about the sci-fi thing, but um, what are your favorite types of movies, shows, plays? What what's, what uh, what really turns your crank? What do you really like? Um, I love action. I like comedy stuff. Like Twenty One Jump Street. Yeah, it was hilarious. I love that that movie. I saw it on the plane ride coming back home, and I just thought this is so underrated. You know, I don't mm-hmm. think people talked about it that much, and I thought it was hilarious. Um, and um, I guess like kind of crime stuff. Uh-huh. I don't know. <laughs> Hill Street Blues and, and all that kind of stuff. I, I, yeah, like, my my parents were Hill Street Blues freaks when I was a kid. Oh yeah. So we always watched Hill Street Blues. Mm. Um, all those old cop shows, which makes me right. not like cop shows these days. <laughs> right, right, I know. Yeah, they get a bit repetitive for me. Oh my goodness! Yeah. You know, t- TV. I liked. You know, I used to just watch old Seinfeld reruns. That's all I watched. And and uh, Family Guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we do a lot of uh, Futurama in this house. So, oh yeah. Yeah, right. we watch a lot of Futurama around here. Um, speaking of cartoons and watching stuff like that, um, have you ever have you watched any? Of the My Little Pony shows, the ones you were in, any of the different, any of the, uh, any of the series. Uh, yeah, I watched the the one that I was in, and I watched the clips that that, that people are sending me on Twitter, and I'm like, how do you find this stuff? <laughs> but uh, you know what? I I don't think I have that channel. Oh yeah, the hub isn't so, in. Uh, yeah, in Canada yet. I think you have to. Yeah, so I I've only seen like I think my episode where I played. Um, Prince Blue Blood. Yeah. And then and that's about it. <laughs> oh, you, you haven't seen the, the Garble episode? No, I haven't. Oh, come on, people, no. get on it. 
I think the- I've, 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 uh, I saw a clip of it. I saw a little clip of it, and yeah. that was like weird because it didn't sound like my voice. Oh, really? Uh, you know, now that I'm now that we were talking together, uh, yeah. that this is the first time I've heard your voice. I'm going. He played Garble, really? Yeah. They must have done something he, really weird to his voice. Yeah, I think they totally morphed the voice. Uh. Because when I first auditioned for it, they were like, he is like this dragon. He's sort of like one of the bad dragons trying to get Spike to prove that he's a dragon, mm-hmm. putting him on all these tasks. And I was like, okay, cool. Okay. And that's why I researched Spike. I'm like, oh, he's young. So I guess I got to be young. So then like the whole time, like my voice was like this. I was like, come on, Spike, prove it. Prove that you're not a pony. Oh. And I was like, okay, so then when I went to do the thing, you know, I was like talking like this all the time. But I watched a clip, a little clip of it, because yeah. that's all I could find. I'm like, that don't sound like me. I think they just deepened it. Yeah, so, so they, they went all night. Like, yeah, it, it, it had that same pacing that you just did, but I think they just yeah. put a deep in it. Yeah, you know? so I think they sort of morphed it, because maybe they had a different idea, because I don't even think I saw a picture reference of what he's supposed to look like so maybe they made him larger because i remember him being a bit bigger right yeah he was he was one of the bigger ones he was more like the, yeah. bu- the buff bigger yeah, yeah. red dragon leader kind of well guy. then they got that part right yes <laughs> <laughs> oh let's see do i have any more questions here before we go to break hmm. do, 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 do. Uh, do, do, do. hobbies did we talk about your hobbies no. I mean, we talked about snowboarding. You like to snowboard. What, what are the kind of things yeah. that, that uh, peak your time when you're not actually acting? Um, I like to keep active. I like to do a lot of active things. And uh, actually, I kind of rolled my ankle yesterday. I was doing <gasps> some gymnastics. Uh-oh. And, uh, yeah, I was doing this, like, kind of handstand twist kind of thing over a block and twisted too much while my foot stayed still. So mm-hmm. just twisted it a bit. But, yeah, I like to do gymnastics. I like to do flips and stuff. Um, I really like uh, mountain rock climbing, like okay. indoor rock climbing. Right. Outdoor when I can. And um, I'm into motorcycles. Me too. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. That's awesome. Absolutely. <laughs> just getting back into cycling. Just getting back into bicycles. Yeah. So. Oh, yeah. Good, I, good. I actually built, I built my own. Uh, I used to, when I went to Motorcycle Mechanics Institute, I actually worked as a bicycle mechanic. So oh. I actually took a bunch of different parts and built like a 1986 Schwinn high-end race bike, which I still have. Oh. So I'm sort of like getting that out, dusting it off. Good I mean, it's, it's still got it's still got the shift levers down on the down tube. It's that old. <laughs> I don't even know what that means, but I believe it. Yes. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so we get out, back out to there. So what we're going to do now is we're going to segue that into our new segment, which is Jack's Blade. 07 is going to be bringing you all the exercise tips every week. Hopefully it's every week. We were we tried this before and I only got one video. So Jax, get on it. So here is his second video. Uh, going to teach you guys about exercise. And we'll be right back after the video so that you out there in TV land can ask Vincent all your questions. And we'll get screwy in the chat. And we'll be back in just a few. So don't go nowhere. Yeah! <sighs> hey man, hey girls, trying to build some muscle, or cut that fat, I got the workout for you, enjoy. Thanks Dusty for that, hey guys, Jack's Blade 07 here, with another fitness tip for you all trying to get in shape for the summer. You know when all those conventions are coming around and it's going to be hot and you got to walk around in little, you know, shirts and stuff like that and your t-shirts. You want that sleeve to be filled out, you know, this good, you know, nice, what I'm talking about. Well, anyways, here's a nice little workout that'll help you out. Now, this thing, it's real quick. It only should take you like 20 or 30 minutes to do it. It's rather intense, so if you have problems, go to the doctor first. But uh, I, I believe in y'all. I believe in y'all. You can do this. You can do this. This I can do it. Everyone can do this. Just work to it. Just this gradual building step. You know what I'm talking about? But anyways, here we go. All right, so the circuit's going to be like this. You're going to do a 10-set circuit of four exercises. And what I basically mean by that, you're going to do four exercises back to back to back. And you're going to rest about, at the very end of that last exercise, you're going to rest about 30 to 60 seconds. Because we're trying to get that heart rate up and cut that fat. I would show you my app right now, but I just ate breakfast, so they're kind of not as good. And I'm going to keep cutting so I can put the pictures up and be like, model pose. But anyways, back to it. All right, the first move we're going to start off with is diamond push-ups, okay? If you can't do diamond push-ups yet, get on your knees 
and just gradually start doing them. And then when you feel stronger, start doing them. And then I want you to do about uh, 12, 10 reps. Something good that, because you're going to be doing 10 sets of this, so it's going to be a lot of work. You're going to be doing 10 sets of these, so I don't want you to burn yourself out in like the first three sets. Either on your knees or straight, because that really helps like get the tricep, you know, the nice little thing right there going. The second exercise you're going to do is burpees. These are one of the best exercises you do. This is full body move, and they're fun too. Well, actually, they kind of get hell after, you know, five sets, but I believe in you guys. So you're going to do about, say, well, since I don't know your fitness level, so if you can do, like, I'd say start off with about three, but if you can increase to, like, I'd say eight, and then do that, then you'd be getting a great workout in. But also, it's just one of the best body movements you could do if you're just trying to get that nice cut feeling. But you also got to eat clean. You can't do one of these nuts. Just think, oh, I can't. I can't do it. Okay, got to eat clean, too. Third exercise, jump squats. So you're basically just going to have your hands behind your head and then just squat down low and jump up. So a lot of people have seen the video of me box jumping. They were like, hey, Jax, what do you do to increase your power? When it's hard to heal for 9,000. <laughs> this is a great exercise for that. Also help get your calves nice and your quads nice and also burn fat like a mother bucker. <laughs> yeah, I said buck. You can keep that. Final thing will be plyometric push-ups, okay? And this is just, you know, to get that, you know, explosiveness, help build those muscle fibers better. Like, since, you know, this is a homework, you have no weights to do this, so you're just gonna be pushing yourself off. Again, like I said, if you can't do them normally, just start off doing them on your knees, and then just push up, and push up, and do it. Hey guys, that's a workout if you want to try it. Uh, I love doing it. It's one of my favorite uh, cardio things or hit if I don't feel like doing a running or jogging. Like it really helps burn fat and helps like put noticeable muscle definition on your arms. But uh, I digress. Uh, I just, it's time to jack it out. And if you guys need any help or assistance, just follow me on Twitter. Ask me questions. I'll answer them. Uh, like my Facebook page. Uh, Subscribe to my YouTube channel where I'll upload some special videos coming that <coughs> they're going to be, I'm, I'm pretty sure you'll be entertained because I've been working on them. But uh, I digress, later to my Z fans, bro to my bronies, especially later to my Pega sisters out there. How you girls doing? Especially you, Celestia. See? But anyways, later guys. Dusty, take it away. And we're back with Mr. Vincent Tong and Screwball. How's it going? How you doing, Scree? All right. Internet issues, as always. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, you know what? Honestly, I don't think it's my internet. It's my computer. I think it is. Uh, say again? I think it is. We're going to get that new computer to you real soon. Yeah. yeah. Real soon, I'm hoping. Yep. And over, no. up over my shoulder da -da -da, is Baron Angle's gift to you, which is screwball, <laughs> screwball on his computer with his mouse in his mouth. <laughs> and and Discord pony or, or John John Delancey pony on the on the monitor. Oh. Yep. So that's for you. It's gonna be on the mail tomorrow. Goody. Yay. Oh, I'm happy for that. Oh my goodness. I got another picture to frame. Goody. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. So what do we got for uh, what do we got for questions? Oh, we got many, 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 many. Uh oh, the, the um this one I better forget about. Um, question is. Uh, to you, Dusty from Pink Pearl, Apple, uh, she wants to know if it's right. She, she's going to be sending us Valentine's cards. Uh -huh. And she was wondering if a, loon, if a loon card is perfectly fine since there's no cheer cards. Perfect, perfectly <laughs> fine. Yes. Luna cards are perfectly fine. <laughs> and thank thank you for flight. sending me one. one? Yes. Okay. Uh, okay, so uh, on, onwards. Um, this, this one is from Imperius. A question for Mr. Hon. Uh if you could revoice any character in show, who would it be uh, Oponi? If I could revoice any character in a show? Correct. If you could revoice yeah. any character on My Little Pony, which would it be? Oh. Let me think. Not just a character that I then then. Yeah. Any character. Any character you would you would think would be fun. Um, I think um Applejack. Ooh. Applejack. Yeah. Mm. It's because um, Ashley does that voice, right? Yep. Yeah, she's a good friend of mine, mm -hmm. and um, and I just love how raspy her voice is, and and she gets to do a little southern draw, so that's kind of fun. Yeah, <laughs> that'd be cool. 
Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Next. Yeah, Ashley <laughs> and I used to uh, we used to dance and sing in a performance choir together. Ooh. Yeah, way back when. You get all the news uh, here first, people. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Me and Ashley Ball go way back. Ash, way back. Lots of fun. Ashley will be here in my house. On the oh, yeah? Yeah. Yep. Sweet. Hey Ocean is touring. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. she's so busy. Uh-huh. She is so busy. We're on another cartoon together, and she's, like, never there. Oof. Like, come back. Is she doing, Play her, with is she doing her lines from the road? She comes back. Like, she flies back, I think, to record it, just like a pickup session by uh-huh. herself, so she'll just do all her lines, but... We don't get to play with her, which sucks. But then she gets Aww. to play with other people around around the world, so that's world. good for her. Yes. We have to share her. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she's so awesome. She is. She's great. I love her. Next. <laughs> you ready for this, uh, Jesse? <clears throat> uh, this question is from James, James Justice! <laughs> <laughs> question is, uh, what are some rocks that you want to see a pony version of? Say that again, screw it, because I didn't even catch it. Uh, um, question is, what are some pony songs you want to see? Uh, uh, what are some rock songs you want to see pony versions of? Rock star ponies? Rock songs that I want to see pony versions of? Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Rock songs. Um, Don't Stop Believing. Oh, my. <laughs> um, how about Bohemian Rhapsody? The yep. Great. Anthems yep. of rock and roll. Yep. Or bicycle. They oh can yeah, ride bicycle. Bicycles. Bicycle race. That's a good. Yeah. One. Yeah. So that, or maybe even a rock version of the Grand Gallop and Gala. That's been done. Really? Yes, a number of Someone's times. Someone's got to send that to me I'm, because yeah. that song was in my head for so long after Andrea sang it. I'm like, mm-hmm. oh my gosh, I'm just in my house going Grand Gallop and Gala. Yes. <laughs> There's a rock version of that. Um, I'm actually working on a heavy metal album with Bronified. Of show songs. Oh, really? Yeah, right now. Nice. Yeah, I'm, I'm working on winter wrap-up as we speak. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So Busy man. Yep, that's going to be awesome. Right. Next. The one is from Weapon Tolerate. Question is, uh, for you, Vincent, do you plan on going to any brony conventions this year? Do I plan on going on to any brony, brony conventions? conventions? You know what? I... I'm so wanting to go because all my friends are going mm-hmm. and I'm just like, please get me out to one of these things. So I've spoken to my agent about it mm-hmm. and um, and I think we're sort of in the works of, of, of hoping to go to a few. Okay. But nothing's officially confirmed. But if you guys have any power of getting me out there, I would love to come and meet you guys because I think you guys are awesome. Awesome. And, we'll uh, see what we can do from our end. Yeah. But yeah, I would love to. I mean, it seems like so much fun, and, and, and meeting the people would be so much fun. Meeting the bronies. Well, the be, so people fun. want to meet Prince Blue Blood. They do. My goodness. Do they really? Yes. He's got such an attitude, though. He does. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, in, in one of my videos, I punched him. D- How dare you? Yes. That is not allowed. <laughs> I, I think, you know, I can put my hooves on anybody I want. Oh. Not if I have my guards with me. Guards! <laughs> They're not coming. Okay, punch away. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> but he was so fun. First Blue Boat was so much fun. He was a fun character. Yeah, was. That was a fun one. I auditioned for that at my house. Oh, really? Yeah, I just, they asked for an MP3. I think that was my very first audition for My Little Pony. Hmm. And so I just laid down a track. I'm like, oh, I didn't know they are doing My Little Pony again. Cool. And then laid it down, and I was like, and got it, and I was like, cool. So, and then I learned about this whole um, brony thing, and I was mm-hmm. like, this is awesome. This is amazing. <laughs> That's cool. Next three. This question is kind of relevant. Uh, from the air, question is to Vincent, which role do you find more fun? Uh, out of all the roles you did in My Little Pony, which, which one do you find to be the most enjoyable? Um, I definitely think Prince Blue Blood was the funnest because you get to be something that you're not mm-hmm. usually. You get to be an arrogant kind of guy. And uh, and he was just such a pansy. He was such a pansy. Oh, he was. And uh, talking about the the fritters, dumplings, mm. <laughs> common carnival fare. It was just such fun, <laughs> delicious words to say in that kind of attitude. 
So I thought that was really, really fun. Although playing Garble was really fun, too, because, you know... He was such a different voice, and um, even though they kind of morphed the voice mm-hmm. when it came out, um, it was a really fun character. And to work with uh, Wesley, uh, Kathy Westlake in that in that episode a lot was really fun. Yeah. Kathy's such a nice what about, uh, what about... What's his... Uh, from what I'm sorry, what about favorite voices outside of Pony? What was that question? Favorite voices outside of Pony that you've done. That I've done? Yeah. Um, uh, 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 uh. I, it, Kid versus Cat, I would think, would have to be my ultimate yes. favorite voice to do. Because yes. it's so ridiculous. Mm-hmm. I don't know if anybody's watched it. I know that you mentioned uh, Screwball, you're a fan of it. Screwy. Love but, it. Uh, for those who don't know, I play the part of Henry. And uh, Henry sort of sounded like this. Uh, he was a uh, you know, very uh, brazen kind of guy. He lived next door to uh, Bert Bertenberger, who was played by uh, Trevor DeVall. Now he's okay. But uh, yeah, man, like, his catchphrase was, uh, up your face. And the audition was hilarious because they brought in, I guess they're like, okay, we have to be uh, politically correct when casting this role. So let's bring in all the Asian actors in town. So uh, they brought in, you know, it was four of us, and, uh-huh. and I went in the room, and I was like, asking for an Asian accent, and I've never seen the show before. It's so, like, yeah, just a slight Asian accent. So, you know, I thought like this, and um, kind of, you know, just a little bit of a, an accent, and like, hmm, can you go uh, bigger? And I was like, okay, sure. So uh, maybe a bit of a thicker accent, maybe talk like this, and I'm like, they're like uh, maybe a bit bigger. I'm like, holy cow. So I just went crazy. I was like, hello, how's this? Everything is yelling. <laughs> perfect. <That's All> right. <laughs> so from then on, like every single line is yell as hard as you can, and it's funny. Ancient Chinese secret. I know. Uh-huh. Now it's out. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's definitely it's got to be one of the funnest voices, and to get away with it, you know. Yeah. To get away with, and to get away with that. Mm-hmm. So crazy. Yeah. There you go. That, that, that made my day. <laughs> Good. Okay. I'm glad. <laughs> uh, so, question is from Fire Runner. Uh, for you, Dusty, is, um, question is, are you looking forward to Las Pegasus? Who is it? Oh, my God. Yeah. I mean, oh you, just, I'm going to go, I'm going to stop right now and go through the announcement, okay? Because they just announced more people. Even more people, okay, mm-hmm. this week. Andrea Libman herself, Michelle Kreber, Britt McKillop, Princess Cadence, which now you're going to have Cadence and Shining Armor are going to be in the same room again for the first time since Candlelight uh-huh. Gardens, Kathy Westluck, Tabitha St. Germain, who doesn't get out of Canada all that often, and, of course, Emma Larson will be there for Friday only. So, yes, big update. It's going to be huge. <laughs> And that is, again, February 22nd through 24th, the Riviera on the Strip downtown in Las Vegas, Nevada. So if you aren't going, you should be. I want to go. We'll figure, we'll, we'll, you know what? Yeah. I got I got an in. Get this man. I got an in. Down. We'll see what we can do. <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah. Full strength because, dude, I want to be in person. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, but you'll see me running around with a little Canadian cape and I'll be like, hey, yes. support Canada. Yeah. Captain Canada. You'll be like, support Canada, eh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, oh, you said it. Oh. No, I'm, I'm the one who came from Michigan. I say A. <laughs> yeah? Yeah, I grew up, in, I grew up uh, in a ho- on a house that was across the river from Canada. So basically, I could mm. swim to Canada if I wanted to. Yep. Ontario. <laughs> Ontario. Ontario. Next. <laughs> Uh, ooh, this is from Kevin Gap. Uh, Kevin. Question if for Vincent is, what was the most weird voice acting audition? Weird voice acting audition. Yeah. Um, the first one that comes to mind is um, I did one for for Barbie, and it was for this hot dog Ateria guy they call them, and they were like, we want him Swedish. And I was like, okay. So then I did this Swedish accent, and I'm like, what the heck is a Swedish accent? So I, so I went on YouTube, and I was researching, and I'm like, these guys just sort of sound British. Yeah. 
So I was trying to do as, as authentic as they want and, and, and um, do, doing it to the best of my ability. And they're like, no, 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 just do more Swedish. And I'm like, mm. So then I started talking like the Swedish air from the Muppets. Yep. And they're like, yeah, that's more like it. I'm like, that's totally not it, but okay. And then I actually got the part because I had this other part in, in, the, in the DVD. And then they gave me this hot dog a teary guy. And then we kept going through different accents because they were like one person would be like that's way too swedish and that's not swedish at all and i'm like <laughs> ah you're trying to get a chinese guy to do a swedish accent there you're you not go. gonna get too far no. so um we did a whole bunch of different ones i started talking with an irish accent and then with like um i don't even know if i did like a jamaican accent or something <laughs> but um <laughs> i ended up with um uh sort of like my rendition of of mexican re- uh uh accent and um and then they went with that so <laughs> it's pretty funny what sometimes gets written down in the description of your audition gets mm-hmm. totally changed once you're in the room yeah. and you've done all your research and then it just goes out the window out yes <coughs> excuse me next oh so this one is from uh Razbro. Uh, from what <laughs> Razbro. oh thank you i was like jesus <gasps> hasbro's Hasbro. watching my show Stop swearing! <laughs> Stop swearing. Uh, Buy some apps. The question is, uh, you, Vincent, uh, have you ever found your, yourself voicing past characters you've done when uh, when you're on your own? Wow, that's a really cool question. Um, yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> I think I kind of use that Prince Blue Blood one com- sometimes. When I'm like <laughs> driving, <laughs> like oh yeah, that's nice. Mm. Oh, look at you. Hello, you look nice. <laughs> that's a nice shirt. Even though Prince Blue, wouldn't say stuff like that. But yeah. yeah, I think I think I do. I I, I don't. <laughs> I think I do it, but I I don't think I'm totally aware of it. But that's a really good question. I think I'm gonna notice that a lot more now and judge myself. There you go. <laughs> So this is from Wolf X one one two zero. Oh boy, this question. <laughs> question is: for, uh, New Lunar Republic or Celestial Empire? Wow, I wish I knew more that I could answer that question. Here is what you need to know. Here's the story. Last summer, during the presidential campaign here in the United States, the princesses. Faced off. And the New Lunar Republic political campaign was up against the Celestial Empire. Uh huh. And Luna was going to bring democracy. And she was going to bring three chickens in every coop. And she was going to bring all these really great things. But no. Celestia won by one vote. And that would be Twilight Spark. Hmm. We're still not over it over here in the NLR. No, we're not over it yet. Wow. Yeah. But in what political camp would you place your flag? Would you be with the Celestial Empire? Or would you be with the rebel forces of the NLR? I would have to plant my flag on um, Donut Joe's Donut (laughs) Utopia. Because... (laughs) I'm going to be a bipartisan. I, I, don't, I don't know enough to actually make <laughs> an actual claim to a, a, a political party. <laughs> yeah, so, so in other words, you're going with the Russian vote. Or, or the Green Party. Or the Green Party. There you go. Yeah. The Green Party. Yeah. <laughs> See, don't Joe, don't Joe loves that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He just, yeah, he has his own <laughs> thing going on. Donatopia. Donatopia. Yeah, I had to like. Uh, who sent me that thing? I should check who sent me that clip. And uh, I'm like, because I really didn't know if I did that guy's voice. Jordan, mm. holy. Yeah, Jordan. Jordan yeah. is Jordan is the man. I might have yeah. to hire him as my my uh, booking agent. No kidding, he I'm knows a lot. Well, he yeah, he knows a lot. He knows like, a lot oh, more yeah, than me sometimes. I guess that is me. That I mean, sounds like me. That's well, how I talk all the time. Yeah. Should I do this one by myself? I mean, he, in the shower. he's a Midwestern pony. You should have gotten me to do that voice. <laughs> <laughs> I could have pulled that one out. But anyway, awesome. 
Hmm. Yes. Next. Uh, so this one is from, how do I say this name? Uh, Achinara. Achinara? I don't know. Uh, questions, group on dust. <laughs> I like this one. Uh, how do you think you do in an episode where you switch roles? What, me and Screwball switch roles? Is that the question? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, Screwy. Could, could you handle the manliness? I don't know. <laughs> That's a good question. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. The, the, the whole show... Could, could, you, could you handle this bag by... of swag over here? You know? I, <laughs> I'm, the I'm main sorry. question is, sorry, I, I have can to... you handle the manliness? Can you handle manliness? I mean, can, could you take a swig from a stuffed Pabst beer can? I, I could try, but I'm probably calling gag for half the show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> PBB. <laughs> It'd be fun to try. Really I really don't know what happened. <laughs> it'd be, it would be fun to try, that's for sure. Yeah. April's well, coming. We have, to, we have to forewarn people. Yes. Yes, because really. Like, maybe we'll do it for. Uh, maybe, maybe we'll do it for April people. Fool's Day. It, it might turn into a Holocaust. <laughs> and you don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> but first, I need a computer. Yes. You know this is terrible. <laughs> Next. So this one is from uh, Hickory. Uh, question for everyone: Will you be at BronyCon? I will. I hope to be. He hopes to be. <laughs> and I'm not sure yet. Yes. Uh, I'm. I. I. I can't go for. I'm either going for Everfree Northwest or BronyCon, and a lot of people have been begging me to go to BronyCon, so that I'm kind of more leaning towards that one. It's because of work issues. It's yeah. not my money it's an issue for me, but it's you know. Enough days and stuff. Oh, I don't know. Time off. Was strict, really. There are so many conventions in the spring. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Yeah. I was just laying out on my iPad. It's like, okay, how, this time off and that time off and that time off. And how many checks do I have between this one and that one? Oh my goodness. <laughs> Not many. So. Yeah. <laughs> uh, one second. Where, where did I put a question? Oh, here we go. Uh, so this one is from uh, Dragoon 77777. Uh, question for Vincent. What's your favorite part of voice acting plus directing? Oh, good question. Uh, favorite part of voice acting is getting to do different types of voices. I think doing, uh, like I was telling um, Dusty, that you know I get cast a lot for my own voice. But when I get to do parts like Prince Blue Blood or Garble, where I get to ham it up a bit or go goofy or like Henry, then that's like my favorite part. Absolutely, just going crazy. Um, the voice directing is it's fun when you're just in the room, just you know, immersed within the story of, of what you're trying to tell, and and almost having a different kind of hand at at uh, telling the story. It's a totally different side of it. So being able to give the right direction and and uh, you know, say the right things to get what your your actor is trying to do to get the story across. So, yeah, does that answer your question? I think so. Oh yeah. All right. Oh, yeah. Okay. There you go. <laughs> no, I don't know. Yeah. It does. <laughs> Here. So, sorry. A uh, question from. Wait. Yeah. The, a question from you, know, Brony. Uh, out of all the shows you work, including actually. Uh, has been the most wonderful show to work on and gratefully part of it the most. Which show? Which show? Is that what? Yeah, most wonderful to work on, work on, or work with. Of all that you've done, including or excluding my little pony. Okay. Um, because of my brief stint on My Little Pony, I can't say that it's like it's so hard to, to gauge. But um, I I have fun every time I'm in the room with those guys, um, for sure. Super fun people. And um, I think, but for me, the people is what makes the the, the work fun. It, it doesn't really become work. And I think Iron Man, uh, Armored Adventures was really fun cast, the great, great cast of really good people. And um, and that was sort of at the beginning of my, my voiceover career. So I really have very fond memories of working with, with that cast and, um, and doing, you know, doing a villain like the Mandarin you know, it was really, really fun. Uh, but then again, doing Ninjago, the Spinjitzu, the Lego show, was really fun as well. Because great cast, once again, and a really fun character to play. And you get to do 
ninjutsu or spinjutsu. So yeah. that's always fun. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, that's cool. <laughs> the question is from Sh- um, Shikara Speeder, my good friend Nathan. Uh, question is, well, he makes these amazing pony posters, and he was wondering if you like one made of either Prince Blue Bud or Bud Joe, your choice. Oh my gosh, anyone, anyone. that would be so, so cool. That would be awesome. Ish. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. I don't know. He'll definitely tweet you them. Yeah. Uh, everyone, well, everyone needs to end Wait, everyone needs to follow this guy on Twitter because he does not have enough. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he does wonderful, <laughs> wonderful followers. posters, and he's done some for the Kiki and Ami uh, cause, and wow. he's done some of me and some of Scurry, and uh, uh, very, very wonderful person. Yeah, I would, I would, I'd be honored if you did that. So yes, Ooh. thank you. Yeah. Also, everyone follow Vincent on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, I'm so new on Twitter, so I, mm-hmm. I don't know. I just try this thing out because people, everyone was on it. Bigger. I got to see what the, this thing's all about. Mm-hmm. And uh, let me tell you, the bronies have been amazing. You know, I, I get, get like three people or four people each day. I'm like, that's amazing. I know people have like thousands of followers. I'm mm-hmm. like, I got 200. I'm so stoked. <laughs> so, thank you for all the support so far, you guys. You guys are awesome. <laughs> Glad to be supporting. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, wait. Oh, this one's from Chaotic Brony. Uh, for for Vincent, are there any humorous incidents incident in the incidents that occurred in the course of your career that you'd like to share? Hmm. Hum- what what was the question again? Have you had any humorous incidents in your career that you would like to share? Humorous incidents. Um. Yes. Well, there was uh, the funniest thing that I laughed my butt off to was while doing um spin uh, the Ninjago show. There was this really touching moment when Zane finally meets his father, <clears throat> and uh, Mark Oliver was doing the voice of the father, and he had this really beautiful monologue saying, "Like, son, this is what I want for you. This is why I did this. I love you." And then Michael Dobson goes, <laughs> <laughs> and we were just dying. We were laughing so hard. Mark was like, who did that? Who did that? He was so upset that we ruined his moment. But it was so... <laughs> we were like on the floor. It was such a touching moment. And it was just... <laughs> and, and the engineers were dying in there. And they replayed it three times. And so, like... <laughs> so the funny thing is... I mean, I would never dare do that. Because I feel like I'm still, you know, kind of a newbie. Compared to these veterans of the voice world. But... Mm-hmm. He cut it. He did it right after he finished his last word, so the, they could still use that take. But little do people know, there was an amazing fart at the end of it. I got shit. Oh my god! Oh, oh that's funny. <laughs> uh, uh, wait, this is a tough question. Uh, question from Zero Point Lover. Question is, what was your least favorite voice job? Least favorite voice job. Yeah. Ooh, that is tough. Oh man. And I think of I don't know, every voice is really, really fun. Um Wow. This is hard. I can I guess I can say uh, radio commercials. I do radio commercials as well, like uh-huh. for T V or for radio and yeah. and sometimes um I get these these commercials that are just full of technical jargon, and it's just tongue twister after tongue twister, oh, yeah. and I have no idea what I'm saying. <laughs> so um, <laughs> it's really hard to to sell a product as hard as you can with a, such confidence and positivity when you have absolutely no, no idea. Clue what you're saying. No idea. So it would be that. It would be those uh, radio commercials. Yeah. Hmm. I never really uh, like voice actors like you actually. Uh, radio commercial as well. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, we do, we do everything. Yeah, cool. So I've done stuff for like l- law firms. I did some for uh, Much Music, which is a Canadian right. equivalent of MTV, and um, for Mountain Dew. I know that stuff. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Uh, yeah, like Mountain Dew and uh, Matador beef jerky stuff like that. And now you make me hungry for jerky. Jeez. <laughs> and it sounds like I'm plugging things right now. So that's. <laughs> Plugs. <laughs> no. Oh, uh, uh, 
question is one second. Where I lost. Give me one second. <laughs> uh oh. So uh, this one's from uh uh Merit Merit two five eight zero. I hope I said your name right. For us, when you first discovered the magic of friendship, did you face any hardships like many other bronies have? Um. Not really. Um, probably because of the way I look. You know, because of the way I, I hold myself. It's like, I like what I like, and I don't give a what you think about it. I really <laughs> don't, okay? So, if somebody gives me heck on YouTube, ban delete, ban delete, ban delete, ban delete, don't really care. Unless you say something funny, and then I'll mock you. Because you're an idiot. And, and that's just it, okay? I don't really care what a lot of people think about what I do and what is going on because I'm having fun doing it. You know, you can waste your life hating me or hating what I do or hating on a TV show that has nothing to do with your life, okay? So if you are so, you know, lost that you comb YouTube looking for videos just to, just to make angry comments on, I pity you. I pity you that you would waste your life doing that instead of being out doing what you love to do, okay? So, sure, come to my videos. Come to my face and tell me that I'm, you know, a man-child and not supposed to be doing this because I'm 44 years old. I couldn't give a flying... I really don't, okay? And you shouldn't either. Because as long as you're not hurting anybody or breaking any laws, do what you want to do that makes you happy. Okay? Sorry, I went off on a tangent. <laughs> Next. Well said. Yes. Uh, uh, this one, I, I have to bring up his name again. <sighs> James Justice! <laughs> the man with the power to manipulate cornflakes. <laughs> it's true. That power it's true. Makes me angry. <laughs> I have to breathe. I have to get ready to do that screen because it's. it's... <laughs> <laughs> so, um, from James Jensen's question uh, for Vince Is playing the snappy type character? I couldn't hear that. Couldn't hear it. Uh, I'm playing the snobby type character. What about playing a snobby character? Is it fun? Is it fun? Is it fun? Yeah. Playing a snobby character. Yeah, it's super fun. Because I don't think I'm a snobby person in real life. So it, it's sort of like I get to explore some a part of me that is not really there all the time. So, yeah, it's super fun. You should try it sometime on your friends. Yes. No, don't do that. <laughs> That's rude. <Yes. laughs> no, it's, it's, that. it's super fun. Yes, quite. Yes. Mm, very calm. Mm-hmm. See, I can't do it. No. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, question. Oh. Not today. I don't know why. Uh, here we go. Uh, this is from Burn May. A question for Vince. I called you Vince. Uh, uh, how, uh, how many Word foreign up, accents do you know? <laughs> People might take that the wrong way, though. <laughs> what was the question? Question is, uh, how many foreign accents do you know? How many foreign accents do I know? Well, let me tell you now. Okay, it starts off with three. I know three of them really well. I know this one, this one, and then this one. See, there's <laughs> so, so many differences in there, you can't even tell it apart. No, I have no idea, man. Um, <laughs> how many different accents I can have? I could probably do them all really badly. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think I got the Chinese one down pat. Yeah, yeah, I can I can imagine yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what, what's the different what's the difference between a Chinese and a Japanese? Uh, Japanese a bit more like uh, shorter and a bit uh, more cut cut off and um, you know very more um, much more serene I think. Very uh, like this. 
But the Chinese, uh, that is a Cantonese, Cantonese accent from Hong Kong. People uh -huh. are taught like this, um, because you know they were almost sound like a British accent because uh, they were ruled under were the rule British rule for a very long time. Very long time. So they uh, have um, some similarities to the British accent. Awesome. There yeah. you are. And the more you know, GI Joe. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no one's half the battle. No one's half the battle. Yo Yo. Yeah. Next. <laughs> This one is from, uh, where's that name again, Atenera. A question to Vince is, have you ever attended any conventions in the past? Uh, and if so, any stories you can share? Any conventions I've been to in the past? Yeah. yeah. Um, I've been to only one convention here in Vancouver, which is called Anime Evolution. Mm -hmm. And uh, they asked me to come because of my work on Death Note. Mm -hmm. And... Um, yeah, it was really fun. Everyone's super nice, and people are so respectful and, and nice. There's one guy who was like, Mr. Tong, can you please sign my book? I'm like, oh my gosh, call me Vincent or Vince. Or don't call me Mr. Tong. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> so, But everyone was really, really cool. And I just love meeting people that are such huge fans of the show. And um, I find it very flattering that people actually want to talk to me. So it's great. I love it. I love it so much. If, if we can't get you to any other convention... You'll have yes. to come down for Ever Free Northwest because it's in Seattle, which oh, is just that's a short close. drive. I mean, have yeah. have Lee Tokar stuff you in the trunk of his car because he drove down oh last God. year. That sounds very scary, but sort of yeah. enticing. Yeah, so yeah, that's coming. <laughs> that's coming up in the spring. So okay, keep that open. I'll, I'll send you some but info after the show. I might not be going to that one. Oh, screw it! What are you doing, man? It's so close, screwy. Yeah. You gotta go to that one. Wait, wait, which? Was it Ever free. Northwest. Yes. Northwest. It's so close to Alberta. That's, you got to go. That's the one that's that's the one that's so damn close to Bromicon, though. Yeah. Wasn't it? By yeah. Like, and it's it's just struggling between. They're, they're like a month Canada? apart. Um. Oh really? Yeah. I it was like only like a couple of weeks. Or something like that. I have to double check. But anyway. Yeah, I'm getting my agent work. on it. I'm telling my agent to, to push yeah, hard. Yeah, get your me. agent on Everfree Northwest at least because it's so close. Yeah, for Dude, sure. Really? I'll, I'll let them know. Yeah. I will let them know all the information that you've given me. The information, me. yes. Maybe even try to push for Las Vegas in February. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's really soon, eh? Yeah, that one's coming up real soon. So that one's yeah, only, that only one, about three weeks away. Oh. <laughs> Con Maine uh, would find a way. What's that? Con Maine would find a way. He just call oh, up M and say, "Hey M, I need ah, yes. tickets." <laughs> Get me so in. this one is from Sketchbook. Question for Vince. This is interesting. Uh, what, uh, what do you want the most from the Brony fandom? Say that again. What do you want the most from Brony fandom? What do I want the most from bon Brony fandom? Yeah, that's, yeah. A, that's the question. What do I want the most? Yeah. I, I'm not sure if he means. I'm not sure exactly what he means. The, the, uh, is a physical you, you, a physical thing, a drawing, a, a carving, you, a, what? On the fandom, I should have this a little better. <laughs> hmm. Uh, I don't know if I ever wanted anything of anyone <laughs> in the Brony fandom. Uh. I would, I honestly would just love to go to these one of these conventions to meet you guys because I think you guys are are such, um, I guess, messengers of positivity in the world, and that's exactly what we need. And um, you you guys are very very loyal to your to your peeps, and and it seems like everyone supports everybody else, and I am a huge advocate of that. So I I would just want to meet you guys. That's what I would want to do. From this discussion, I want to meet you. <laughs> I, I want to yes. I I go. I want to go up to Whistler and like chuck you off a mountain. Woo! Like, let's, do let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> I'll join you. Guys. I gotta get, I, I gotta get my passport. Like, uh, no. We gotta go skiing somewhere. Whatever the heck you guys do. Yes. Nice. Let's do it. Yes. <laughs> it's a date. Yeah. We, we should get me, you, and Andrew on the bikes in the summer. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. He just got a, a new yeah, one. He just got his. He got his Ducati. Yes. Ducati. Ducati. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Go screwy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um. Ooh. Here's one. Now, this one's from D-Pad 
uh, D-pad pony, mm-hmm. uh, quest and events. What video game character would you like to voice? Ooh, good question. What video game character would I like to voice? Yeah. Yeah, if you're into games. <laughs> um, hmm. I think if they made an actual Ninjago video game, I'd like to <laughs> voice that, but I don't think they ever talk in the Lego video games. No. Um, well, yeah, usually grunty. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, um, you know what? I don't play video games that much. I, I'm a huge Halo fan, and I love Halo. There you and go. You those... can be Master Chief. <laughs> yeah, I can be Master Chief. No, but Master Chief is really cool. I would like maybe like to be an alien or something. One of those little guys. Like... Oh, yes, the grunts. Oh! Be... <laughs> One of those dudes. <laughs> um, I don't know. I think I think video games are really cool because they're becoming more like cinematic features, you know, with the yeah. little uh, the clips that are intertwined. And uh, what's that new God of War one? That's yep, God of out? War. Yep. Oh, that looks amazing. Yeah, you know, I, I played. You know, Vincent, I, I, I played a lot of Ratchet and Clank. When oh it came yeah. Out, right. And I'm, cool. I'm hearing like you're like that close to being Ratchet. I mean, oh really? really? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice. Ratchet had this, you know, surfer dude kind of thing going on. And he sort of had this, yeah. you know, high, high voice thing going on. And you're like, you know, just a little, real close to Ratchet. All right. Yeah, yeah that's I'll it. Look him up. I'll look him up and see how he talks. And yeah. Maybe. We'll get a job one day. Yeah. Because <laughs> they're still making Ratchet and Clanks, that's for sure. Yeah? Nice. Yeah, I, I don't know. Actually, um, sorry? I'm, I'm just thinking, I, I don't, I, I've never tried Ratchet and Clank. I'm not sure what that was like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm like, you know, Mario Kart, old school. Oh, yeah, there you go. Go Dude, I'm, I'm Atari 2600 old school. <laughs> oh, Atari. What's that? What's that? that you, it, <laughs> dude, I, I used to play video games on Vic 20's uh, tape machines. <laughs> I don't know. My really game was on a cassette tape. I don't. I don't know what those are. <laughs> <laughs> What's a cassette? <laughs> What's a cassette? What's a CD? <laughs> Shut up! I pause. <laughs> Oh, it's gonna turn into that. <laughs> uh, sorry. Mm. Ooh, wait, was this one asked? No. Um, um okay, well, this, um, okay, I was for, uh, this is for Infinity Pony. Question for Vincent. What was the most difficult voice for you to do? I don't know if I got one. The most difficult voice? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think it was the the Mandarin in uh, in Iron Man, because uh, when when I'm voicing Gene Khan, it's fine. It's just like my voice is kind of laid back, mm-hmm. and then he puts on the rings of power, and then my voice all of a sudden had to go down here, and so it's a bit of a stretch from my normal speaking voice. Yeah. But to be menacing. And to have the gravel, and then start to fight in this voice. It was very, very straining. So um, that would be one of the hardest voices I've had to do. Even though it sounds very manipulated because he has like the whole suit of armor on. Right. Um, it was like the screaming and the battle. Like, when you're doing fights, when you read the script and you're going, okay, there's three different fights in here, and the last fight is epic, and you're blasting this. Iron Man shoots you here. This thing falls out. I'm like, oh my gosh, my throat's gonna be thrashed. <laughs> So, um, but yeah, I think that was, that would be the most difficult one, but very, very fun to say the least. Okay. I have to ask, uh, have you ever uh, seen anything that the Brony Phantom uh, has to offer, like music, videos, uh, art, that sort of thing? Have you oh yeah, that I've been, I was doing my whole research on, on Bronies beforehand because I was like, because I, I knew, I've known of the Bronies, and mm-hmm. but I've never talked to one. So I was really excited for this interview. Oh, awesome. And I really wanted to, um, really wanted to do my uh, research and check everything out. And I've seen tons of stuff on, online, and the music is really fun, and the, the, there's so much fan art. Yeah. And some of it's amazing. Like, you guys should be yeah. doing this for a living if you guys aren't there's, already doing it. For there's some guys out there that should be working on the show. Or should, yeah. Or, or working exactly. on a show. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or creating or your creating own show. A show. Like, That's... look at me, I'm I'm amazing. Yes, fan built. You know, so um, uh, yeah, I think, and just like the camaraderie that I find that everyone 
has, oh, yeah. you know, in support of this show and support of each other. I think that's, that's what's really cool about it. And, um, and I, the very first video that I watched about it, about, about the bronies is the, it was a reaction video that I think Dusty had. You're on. Yeah, that was a nice reaction video. Yeah, watching the reaction to the teens react. Yeah. 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 And I was like, what is this? I was really curious. And then, and then seeing your guys' reactions is so funny. Mm-hmm. It was awesome. And I was like, oh, okay. That makes sense. Yep, we were doing that. <laughs> uh, there's a couple of them I should send you. Uh, Picture Perfect Pony, which is Manda Pony's song, which was animated uh, uh, by a gentleman who just does, who does the QDR Crusaders uh, Tumblr. Who just, it was, it's perfect. It's, it looks like, the sh- it looks like yeah, DHX did it. It's so mm. good. So oh. that uh, look up picture perfect pony, um, some other stuff that's out there is just you know, a lot of living tombstones music, uh, the Discord song, uh, just tons and tons and tons of stuff. Mm. Nice, yeah. I wish we had the uh, the channel up here that way I can you know actually yeah. see the stuff and, and see what's what the cartoon. I, I is thought looking. I thought that iTunes Canada was gonna start uh, was gonna start flowing it because I actually have I have it on on uh, iTunes. So oh, yeah. Nice. yeah, so we just and basically it comes hoping, up on iTunes and we just play it. I'm hoping because honestly, I I, just, I really have to download all of that so illegal in order to watch it. <laughs> Here I, I said it come get me calls. No, Seriously, <laughs> I, I can't I can't I can't it easily, but that's not all so I have to, you know torrent every single one of them. Yeah. So I as soon as it comes to iTunes, I am buying them. Because I like to support the show, so mm-hmm. absolutely the yes, show. we all do. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So this. Yeah. So is there? Hey, can I ask you guys a question? You go right ahead, man. British. So there's go. bronies. Yes. Yeah. Are there? And so do the female. The females are called bronies. Pen. Are they called bronies also, as well? Yeah. Also, but Peggy but sisters. yeah, some like to be called Pega sisters. Pega. Ah, oh, that's yeah. hot. I yeah. like that. Pegasus. Yeah, uh-huh. Do they? Is it spelled with sisters? With no, a it's sister. It's that... sisters. But, oh, okay. But when that term actually came out, when that term actually came out, the girls that weren't Pegasus took it took it as a fence. It's like, well, we're oh. not Pegasus. We're Earth ponies. Or we're unicorns. It's like we're bronies. Right. And that's it's true. They're all bronies, and they have some like right. to be called Pegasus sisters, but everybody's a brony. Cool. Yeah. Nice. I love it. Hmm. I can't wait to like do my first bro huff with someone. Absolutely. I'm excited for that moment. Mm-hmm. Must, you should have, must, you should have seen must, Andrew Francis. Oh my goodness! Oh, Andrew goodness. Francis came to Everfree Northwest. It was his first yeah. convention, right? Yeah. And he's I'm in I'm in the the bar, and all of a sudden I see him run. I say, like, whoa, 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 Andrew, where are you going? He's, he's got this scarf around his neck that somebody had made for him, which was mm-hmm. you know uh, the the uh, with his cutie mark on it, and he's running around going, I'm getting presents. Yeah. I'm going <laughs> New Brony. Yep. That's awesome. <laughs> so, so like, New Brony. Yep. He's like That's running. He's all, he was all over the place. It was awesome. Nice. Mm-hmm. It's funny when you because I, I, when I saw him, I'm like, I was looking at him, like, who is this man? He's insane. And, and it's like, it is, oh, man. Like, oh, my God. It's shiny number. I run up and I just give him a handshake. Not a bro, just a good old handshake. I'm mm. like, hi. I'm Screwball. And then he just has a pretty weird name. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, times. You got some more screwy. Uh, this one is from Curry. Question. Uh, oh. <laughs> question is who is best pony? <gasps> who is the best? Pony? Who is best pony? Who is best pony? Yes. Now, is this a trick question? Is no, 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 this is not a trick question. <laughs> this is to you, pony? to you, you've seen the show. Yes. You've worked on the show. Yes. Who in your mind is best pony? Oh, my goodness. Yes. <laughs> I'm so scared to answer this. No, 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 no. don't be scared. Don't be scared because everybody has an opinion. Trust me, everybody has an opinion. Everybody has an opinion. No matter what you do, Every... there will be no opinion, so it's over it. <laughs> Everybody has <laughs> everybody. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, wow, you guys have put me on the spot. Yes. Uh, That's pony. 
it's tough. If I had to choose, I think Applejack. There you, there you go. There you, yeah. There you go. Applejack. I gotta be loyal to my my Ashley Ball and my Applejack. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You you just made my roommate very happy. Yeah. Yeah, because he he he's an Applejack fan himself. So. Cool. Yeah. So, I like Applejack myself, but I'm cheerily, cheerily all the way. So. I'm flo- mm-hmm. for the win. <laughs> for the win. Yes. <laughs> Let's go oh. screwy only a few more. Yeah, uh, this one is all for me. I have to bring this one up too since I uh, usually see like all sorts of uh, all, all sorts of stuff. Do you have any favorite or favorite uh, brony musician or anyone out there that you like that you've heard about? Whoa, that was so choppy. That was, uh, try it again, screwy. Oh, hot cakes. <laughs> um, favorite, uh, Favorite Brony artist out there? Music, art. Oh, okay. Um, you know what? I'm so new to the whole um the whole Brony fandom that I can't even say. I think I'm gonna have to get more well versed before I can choose because I really don't know if even if I saw an amazing picture, I wouldn't know who it's done by. So mm-hmm. um I can't I can't I, I don't think I can answer that, sorry. Start start uh, slumming uh Equestria Daily. All right, and then you'll you'll see a lot of good stuff. So sounds good. Sounds good. Yes. Sounds very good. Yes. I would check that site out momentarily. <laughs> uh, sorry. Um. Oh, here it is. You're so oh, Canadian. Stop apologizing, you all. Oh, everyone says that, so and I, it's true. I I really do see it for the time. Yeah. And you know, in in the voice world, we have to constantly correct ourselves and not say sorry, but we have to say sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. 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 We're Americans. Sorry. 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 <laughs> oh no! I'll never be able to. I'll, I'll never be able to do this ever again. Uh, <laughs> not with that attitude. I've been tolerate. Question all. Yes. Was Vincent's, Vincent's answer? What kind of dance moves can each of you do? Oh, you guys saw my my dance moves. I made a video of my dance moves. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna have to send you that link there, Evans. Okay. Yes. Because I, I did my I did my subscriber special. Oh and, yeah. And I threw out the uh, I threw out some dance moves on the subscriber special. Wicked. Wicked. Yeah. I gotta, I gotta come up with a new one because I'm about to bounce ten thousand subscribers on YouTube. Nice. And nice. it's like, what am I gonna do now? <laughs> oh my! That's hmm. Amazing. What would I have? What do I have in mind? Wouldn't <laughs> you like to know? The power. <laughs> yes. <sighs> um, my dance moves would be uh, the pelvic thrust is pretty good. Mm-hmm. You could do a pretty good cabbage patch. Kid, uh, no. Um, I did a Gangnam style gig the other day. Actually. Oh, really? Yeah. My friend, he does this. He has a, a kind of like an events planning kind of thing, and Capcom was having a party, mm-hmm. and he asked me if I wanted to do Gangnam style. I'm like, Yeah, I do. Yeah. That's an awesome song, and that's an awesome dance. So I did whoop 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 um, Gangnam style. There you go. Yeah. So I did Gangnam style, and um. Yeah, man. I have I have some old uh, some old videos on YouTube mm-hmm. um, of me doing dance slash flips and stuff like that because mm-hmm. I do some gymnastic stuff and nice. martial arts stuff. So you can check that out if you guys want. Cool. You get me the link and we'll put it on the rep- we'll put it on the uh, links in the yeah, replay. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I will do that for you. Yeah. One more, one more, things. Screwy. Make it good. Make it a very good mm. question, Screwy. <laughs> Uh, hey, you, uh, get away from my slurpy machine. That's what I have to put in, though. You're going to be receiving a present uh, for you. The uh, question is, would you like a wood carving of Prince Blue Blood from your name? Oh, my gosh. Say yes. You yes, got say yes. 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 A thousand times yes. My gosh, that's such an honor. Thank you. Yes. He makes amazing wood carvings. Dusty got one, I got one. They're all oh, they're amazing. Mm-hmm. Yes. Really? Yep. Oh my gosh. Oh, yeah. That'd yep. be so cool. He does one he does one for all our guests and he does one for most of the people on the show. In fact, some got two. Wow. So, oh uh, my gosh. yeah. Well, that's wonderful. Thank you. Yeah. 
So we'll get uh, we'll get your contact info to him so he can get it to you. Uh, probably he'll probably uh, bring it to a convention. Uh, okay. Because he was at Every Free Northwest last year. I'm not sure if you're going, Spike, uh, but uh, get to me and we'll we'll get you uh, Vince's information on on how to get it to him. All right. Cool. So that with that, we are up against the end of the show. So we know what that means. It means it's time for me to read off all the wonderful entertainment that you out there can check out here on Everfree Network all week long. And we start off tomorrow with Masterpiece Theater. Tomorrow is the chilling conclusion of Cardwin's story, Shower of Stars, narrated by myself and written by Cardwin. With all kinds of wonderful people doing the narrate, I'm doing the narration. We're doing audiobook. Come and listen to the chapter five and chapter six. You're gonna love it. And that's going off tomorrow, Tuesday, 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern. Cutie Art Crusaders, the CAC find and discuss the best fan art bronies have to offer. Tuesdays, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern. Equestria Inquire, the EQI guys, Joe Stevens, Tech Rat, Masan El Cat, and LTT. Look. Do comedy straight from the desk in Ponyville. That's Wednesdays, 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern. Into the spotlight with Osaka Jack. Osaka interviews those bronies in the fandom who are awesome, but don't quite get the spotlight that they deserve. And that's Wednesdays, 7 p.m. Eastern. Excuse me, 7 p.m. Pacific, 10 p.m. Eastern. Sketchy Sounds, Sketchy, when he doesn't have a cold, will be playing a two-hour live acoustic music set for you Thursdays, 11 a.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. Pacific. Then, those gentlemen of Bruni Breakdown, Saber Spark and Paleo, will discuss everything that's going on in Bruni fandom for the week. And that is 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific on Thursdays. Lunar Republic Takeover. Nightmare Moon herself takes over the radio side of this very program for an all-request show. That is Fridays, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. Then we get to Michelle Krieber's show, Saturday Night Songs, where she will join you and talk in Apple Bloom's voice to make you all go squee. And that is Saturdays, 4 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Pacific. One Tricks Mixology, which is the electro, trance, and house music show spun for you by DJ One Trick. And that is Saturdays. 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. Pegasisters Live, which is sort of like this show, sort of like Saber for Park show, but from the female Pegasister point of view. And that would be on Sundays at 10 p.m. Eastern, at 7 p.m. Pacific. And the new show, Blue Screen Bronies, is also on Sunday where they discuss all kinds of gaming awesome. So, wonderful list of shows that you can check out right here. On I gotta cut in right here. Do it. Uh, uh, just uh, as a reminder to everyone that Bernie Breakdown is currently on a temporary hiatus. What? So what? Yeah, just just a forewarning for those who think it's popping up. Uh, yeah, temporary hiatus. He needs to talk to me. He doesn't talk to me anymore. I need to take Saber Spark aside and say what? Well, they do have you know they do have their documentary they need to finish. So yeah, that's probably what's going on. As they're trying to get their documentary done. Um, speaking of the documentary, how many people out there have watched the new documentary on bronies? You're going to kill me. I, I have neither. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's a $12 download to watch that uh, beautiful picture with uh, Moa in it for a few seconds. But, uh, nice. Yes. It was a uh, wonderful movie. Um, uh, very well done. Uh, and it really is worth your time to go check that out. Um, so make sure you go check out Brony, Brony's documentary and give that a download because I think you're going to really enjoy it. Um, okay, and going into next week, next week's guest will be Chris Savino. Chris wrote some of our favorite, two of our favorite episodes, which is Stairmaster with Blue Shai and Boast Busters, which is the original Trixie episode. So... Chris will be here to discuss those on top of everything that he's done in the industry from Bigfoot and Gray, which is what he's doing right now, all the way back to working for Spumco on Ren and Stimpy. So, if you know that show, we got plenty to talk about. So, don't miss that. 
And I want to thank Mr. Vince Tong for taking time out of his busy schedule. Oh, thank you guys. And, and coming and joining us tonight. Thank you, everybody. Yes, and Screwball. It's been awesome. Thank you, Screwball, for keeping the crazies in check. And all you crazies <laughs> for coming and watching this show week after week. <laughs> Uh, so we will be again back with Chris Savino next week and I'm going to, uh, you know what? Of course, screw it. I screwed it up again. I didn't queue up the ending. That's how you normally do because I'm an idiot. Ah, <sighs> where is it now? Oh, there, wait, there it is. Look, look okay. Look I got it. I got it. I'm, I'm, a, I'm the professional around here. Remember that. <laughs> <laughs> again, thanks Vince for coming by. Thank you, guys. Absolutely. And Thank you. we are out. Remember to come back next week, and we'll see you then. Bye-bye. Good night, sweetheart. Well, it's time to go. Good night, sweetheart. Well, it's time to go. We hate to leave you, but we'll be back soon. Good night. Sweetheart, good night. Good night, sweetheart, good night.